day today. Thursdays are always a big day. I uh, got three different uh, one to two hour long teaching sessions uh, beginning at one o'clock and going all the way until about nine o'clock in the evening. It's a good day. News has come that uh, President Kieschnick of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod will be reading excerpts from his new book and signing copies. Uh, this will happen at the Concordia Historical Institute Museum located on the second floor of the Synod's International Center in St. Louis on March 30th at 6 p.m. I'm not going to be there. Kieschnick says, people in our church body have a right to know what's in the head and heart of the president of their church body. An excerpt might allow you to do that without going all the way to St. Louis for the book signing on page 61. Many congregations in the LCMS offer a variety of worship experiences, including especially those with multiple worship opportunities each week. In quite a few cases, the blended or contemporary services vary widely. Many pastors have testified that members of their congregations are much more likely to invite non-churched friends and family members to the more informal services. They also indicate that the overwhelming majority of new members are first introduced to the congregation through the informal, blended, or contemporary service rather than through the traditional formal services. So, in case you were wondering what your president is thinking about the future of the church body, there is at least part of his answer. Meanwhile, Kalel the Trumpeter gives me my first Ask the Pastor 2.0 question. In response to yesterday's video talk about the mythos of American societal culture, you know, that myth that all myths are bad and that I then become good when I stop believing what I used to believe. In response to this, Kalel the Trumpeter asks, any thoughts on how to overcome this particular cultural myth? Do you think that just by identifying it and asking people to reconsider, it will self-destruct? Well, that certainly is kind of how Salvo magazine is approaching it. You know, whenever you talk about philosophy, that brings the philosophy itself to the surface and you're able to assess ideas and question whether or not they're actually valid or useful ideas. Look at we're right back at our myth. Uh, however, no, I don't think that it's just going to self-destruct by kind of talking about it. In fact, quite the opposite. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved by those that by nature are not gods. Now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world? We were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world, but when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption. Philosophy is the law. Studying the mythos of a sociocultural environment is the first article of the creed. And the reality is that no, even if you were able to tear down this particular social cultural construction, another one's just going to rise up in its place. You're always in Babylon. You're always in Egypt. The difference in what we want to do here and now is not just point out, look, it's slavery, but point out, look, here's freedom in Christ. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Once, you were not a people but now you are God's people. There's a big difference between discussing the philosophical, cultural issues of our day for the sake of, of being good citizens in society and believing that somehow we're going to save the world by doing so. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. All right, and because yesterday was such a great day and I had so much good stuff, I didn't actually have time to fit it all into the video. Here's a bit from yesterday. Gotten Steest, what is liturgy oriented toward for the forgiveness of your sins, especially received in word and sacrament? And there's a nice little piece in here by Pastor Peterson uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Private absolution this has fallen gravely out of practice, points out that when Luther speaks about the office of the keys in the small catechism, and whenever our confessions talk about confession and absolution, they are generally not referring to the preparatory rite that we have at the front of the divine service, but in fact, the actual exercising of pastoral care through the keys which forgive sins individually to you as you come penitent, desiring simply to receive the good gifts of Christ. This is just missing from our churches, and one of the goals of any actual confession professional pastor should be to try to at least get this somewhere into the eyesight of our more pietistically oriented American congregations. Pastor Peterson does a great job of trying to gently write about such issues. The best and most necessary preparation to hear confession, that is for a pastor, is to make 
confession. Now that that is over, let me point out that there is a new Worldview Everlasting podcast that is up. You can find it at iTunes. You can find it at my blog, beallwashedup.blogspot.com. Meanwhile, if you're at that Babylon Falling blog, you'll find that there is a new chapter in my eventually, hopefully, to ever be finished one of them books, which you can read. And if you want to read the rest of it, because it's like, wow, I'm jumping into chapter six, just kind of go back through the history of the blog. It's all right there for you from chapter one. And I would say thank you for the many comments that we're receiving on the Wittenberg Trail and at YouTube and some of the emails. That's great. So hit that subscribe button that's there, not there. I think it used to be there, but now it's there. Pass on the word. Put it in your own blog. Do whatever. Yeah. I did find it interesting, and I did want to say this also, the title of the book, Waking the Sleeping Giant, The Birth, Growth, Decline, and Rebirth of an American Church. Um, there's a word he left out. This faith is a living, well-founded confidence in the grace of God, because Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, and this is God's work to save all mankind.